button on the control or on the wheel. Push the push the wheel button. Then the wheel never be deactivated. That's how it's so good. It's easy to see the wheel. But the push and throttle roll on. So here is the super do-it-yourself e-brake mod, easiest, simplest one on YouTube. I came up with this laying in bed last night because the controller and the steering wheel can be hooked up to the Xbox and used at the same time while playing Forza. I'll just have this controller turned on while my wheel is running and then this will be mounted, this controller will be mounted right at the bottom here. This little button, this little button is going to be glued onto the end of this pole. And then I got the pivot point with those two L brackets with this screw going through it. If my camera was to get a focus. So this is where the handbrake is going to sit naturally. Straight up and down like this, a little bit of an angle. And then pull it back, like pulling the handbrake. And it's going to push that button and push the A button on the controller. And use that as our handbrake. So stick around and let's see how this comes together. We're going to keep toying with it here and try to fine tune it. Also, I just got the new Sparco seat. So that's going to go in and hopefully we're going to have the full seat set up, arcade seat, built soon. Stay tuned. So it turned out way jankier than how I pictured it in my head for sure. But, pushing that A button, which is my e-brake. So we're about to go give her a first test run. This was obviously, we were too lazy to get the saw out, so we used all the scrap pieces we had laying around that happened to fit pretty nice. And then, uh, this is a full, full, just test to make sure that it's going to work, because the Recaro is getting a full seat build soon. So then the, the handbrake is obviously going to be incorporated, or Sparco, sorry, the Sparco seat. So the handbrake is going to be incorporated with the full framing of the, uh, of like the whole arcade seat. But one more time, just so you guys see how this works and you understand the full. So this is just a piece of metal I bought at Home Depot for nine bucks. And then I ran it down and drilled a hole in it put a nail through with two springs on the inside between this piece of wood that the two L brackets are holding the piece of metal. Drilled drill the hole through there and it has a spring on that so it has some resistance and when you pull back on this that way obviously on the bottom of it past the pivot point it goes the opposite way which I just jankily shot a screw into the the conduit or whatever you want to call the metal pipe found a random little red cap in the bottom of my tool bag just to protect the controller a little bit and when you pull the brake back it hits the button and then we got a really janky controller holder holder so we just sort of frame that in so it's pinching the controller in there but we're about to go get our first few test runs on it so let's picture this. What is going on you guys? This is going to be a quick little video showcasing mainly my um, e-brake that I just built. This mechanical e-brake that has no wires attached. No wiring at all. All mechanics. Very, very simple. I think it's all built with about $15 worth of crap. Um, so let's just do a quick rundown of what it is. I bought this piece of metal tubing at uh, at Home Depot for like nine dollars. This big long piece, and then I just put an old BMX grip on it, and that's the that's essentially the e-brake. You pull back on that, and when you pull back on that, it goes off our pivot point right here, where I just drilled a hole. I mounted two L brackets to these two L brackets to a two by four, 
and then I just held this in between the, the metal piece, got a mark on each side through the holes of the L bracket, pulled it out, drilled out those holes, stuck a bolt through it, screwed that down tight so it's holding it. Now we have a pivot point. Get fours to stop uh, being so loud here. And then after you get the pivot point, I had drilled a oval oval hole, ovaled out hole because of it needs to be oval so then when it comes back it isn't catching on a tight circle um, and then I put a nail through there because if you put a screw or a bolt um, then the threads of it catch all the way along there you can feel the threads grabbing so I went up going with a smooth shank nail and then I just put some two springs in between so it has some resistance but when you pull back on the the e-brake past the pivot point, below the pivot point, it goes out, obviously. So I just screwed a screw into there, put a little protection piece on it so it doesn't smash in my button, and when you pull the e-brake, it pushes my A button. As simple as that. And then I just have my A button set up to be my e-brake on Forza. So let's turn on the e-brake. You have Forza running right now, Forza Horizon 3, I already have my wheel connected beforehand, that's key. You need to have your wheel connected before you turn on the e-brake. That's essentially it, I don't think there's much else I can show you. Then all this crap is just so it's sturdy, just so when you pull back on it, it doesn't want to tip backwards or anything. And I know how ugly it is, this is full prototype mode. One main flaw that you guys need to hear is that when the e-brake is pulled, you lose all functionality of the steering wheel. So you can't be turning or hitting the gas. I know that sounds bad, but it's doable, trust me. Alright, let's get some clips. Alright, let's see if we can't get a couple clips. I know the angle is a little bad, but I will uh I'll definitely come up with something better in the future for future videos. So as you can see it works. Like I said, the e-brake, once you pull the e-brake, there is no control of your steering wheel or gas or clutch. Which is a bit of a flaw for sure. But as you can see, it is absolutely doable to uh, kind of kind of learn your way around that. You just need to really whip your way into the entry before you pull the e-brake and you have all your weight transferred correctly. And that's all it really comes down to. Let's see if I can't get a couple. Darn it, that was a good drift too. So I'm sure if you're watching this video, and it's somewhat around the release date of this video, you know, oh, I hit second instead of, or fourth instead of second. Um, I'm sure that you know or uh, have heard of that Forza Horizon 4 is on its way out. Um, it's gonna be coming out in October, October 2018, um, which is just a matter of a few months away. So that's what really got me pushing, starting to finish my drift build. Um, it made me come up with this random design last night because I'm not super wire savvy and I didn't want to tear into my wheel and chance messing up my wheel at all. See, there was a good example of me not being able to turn my wheels while pulling the e-brake and it kind of, kind of messed up my drift. Um, but anyways, Forza Horizon 4 is on its way out and that's why I really started pushing and decided I need to get a handbrake figured out ASAP. So this is what I came up with. I know it's a little janky, but for being under $15 and a little bit of homemade ingenuity, redneck ingenuity, MacGyvering, it turned out pretty darn good. I'm not, I must say so myself. Um, obviously with the full build, the base is gonna be much cleaner. It's not just gonna be a bunch of random two by four cutoffs all screwed together sketchily. Um, but this was just like a full test to make sure it works, which I found out there is the one main flaw of not being able to use the wheel while pulling the e-brake. So that has kind of inspired me to think I might have to get a new wheel and rebuild my design. And by getting a new wheel, I mean that's gonna fix it because on this wheel there are no buttons on the base of the wheel. They're only on the actual wheel itself. Every button's moving the entire time. On the other wheels, there's buttons right here, so I could set up and do the same sort of thing I did with the controller, just a pressure point, so then it turns and pushes the button on the wheel. Because uh, when you're just pushing a button on the controller, then the controller is activated, and the wheel is deactivated. 
So if it was just put, pushing a button on the contr or on the wheel, if it was just pushing the wheels button, then the wheel would never be deactivated. So then it'd still be able to use the steering wheel and like the clutch and throttle at all times. But as you can see, even though it is a little sketchy, not being able to turn the wheel when the brakes pulled, that doesn't mean it makes it impossible. It is still very, very much possible. But I am planning to build an entire, as you can tell, it's pretty ghetto right now, my setup. My wheel's just connected to a table. Um, the next step now is going to be building this all together. Um, building a platform for the shifter, building a lock-on spot for the e-brake, and then building an actual seat for my Recaro seat, and then a stand to hold my wheel and pedals in place will be the next real step. So make sure and stay tuned for that. Um, I'm sure I'm gonna do a, a how-to or at least a walkthrough of it, of what I end up deciding to do, because I'm sure I'm gonna end up coming up with something pretty crafty. Um, I've been putting a lot of thought into it. I'm not sure what style I wanna go with it as, or if I wanna do it with wood framing, or if I wanna do it out of metal and do just put some welds in it. Um, got distracted with that drift there. So make sure and definitely stay tuned with that because I'll be excited to show you guys what that turns into. Ooh, that was a clean e brake to downshift pull. Pull her into the gas station here. Oh, shoot. With, the, with it not being able to steer when you pull the e brake or be on the gas, it makes, it makes low speed drifts nearly impossible. Um, by low speed, I mean like dead stopped, second gear drifts, or first gear drifts for that matter. Um, it does make those very, very difficult. It makes higher speeds easier. I don't know if you can tell, but it's obviously much easier to uh, kind of lock the drifts in at high speeds. Mainly because when you're going a little bit faster and when you're in, the, in a higher gear, it's just a little bit less sensitive to everything you do. Um, every little wheel movement isn't as necessary compared to as if you're going very slow. So when the wheel straightens out, because every time I pull the e-brake, the, the front wheel is straightened out completely. Um, whether my wheel is turned all the way or not. Just because of the controller deactivation thing. Shoot, didn't enter that right. But, so that's a little bit of a problem. But other than that, you guys, this was an awesome build. I do highly recommend trying to do it. Um, if you have more questions or you guys do want an in-depth video, I will do one. Um, I will do a more in-depth video too once I get like the uh, the final design figured out for the whole racing wheel. The whole racing wheel set up with the seat and everything attached. Um, and, and, and like I said, I plan to get a new wheel. So once I get a new wheel that has buttons on the side, I'll be doing another build on the e-brake, doing a different style e-brake for sure. And then that will be the uh, final product. But definitely stay tuned for that. I'm going to try to link up to put like the live gameplay in the corner of the screen or something. But I'll see if I can actually get it to work. It might take a few times messing with it. This video might not have it. But you guys, I really do appreciate you guys tuning in watching this video. I hope that you've enjoyed watching me skid around. I hope that you guys have got um, either some inspiration to build your own e-brake. Um, if this isn't the exact idea that you want to go with fine be it but i do really highly recommend trying to figure out something because it is a lot of fun um so most definitely do look into it thank you guys so much for watching if you guys enjoy this video definitely hit a thumbs up let me know that you guys like it leave in the comments if you have any questions suggestions or anything at all of that nature let me know if you guys are hyped for Forza Horizon 4 because I'm losing my mind. I'm so excited. I can't even wait. Let me know what you think of my super sketchy build. I know it's really ghetto, but I love it for how ghetto it is. It really, I mean, it works, and that's all that really matters, right? <laughs> so, you guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Be sure to stick around for that Ricardo or for that Sparco seat build. You want to see it.